God bless you, family, King, Jesus, bless you. Uh, well, we made it back to Florida, and uh, praise the Lord for safe travels. It's so, so good to be home. I want to tell you a little bit about my journey and uh, different ways that, you know, I purpose myself to be looking for, uh, you know, winks from the Lord, signs from the Lord, encouragement from the Lord, and I wanted to share some of those with you. I encourage you guys uh, to do the same throughout your days. Just, uh, you know, like having an eye for something, you tend to see it more often, right? So uh, I think the Lord communicates to us always, and he wants to encourage us um, immensely, especially in these last days. So uh, definitely uh, keep your eyes open, your ears open, look for these things. Um, I believe they're everywhere, and uh, praise the Lord, he's so good to us. All right, so before I get into um, our road trip and our time uh, from Florida to Minnesota, then back from Minnesota to Florida, from End Time Headlines today, I saw an article uh, talking about a hoodwinker sunfish. Now, this thing is like a newer species, they say, in the last uh, 10 years. It was found in the Pacific Northwest. And, um, yeah, anyways, it made me think it was one of two things. Like, initially made me think, as in the days of Noah, so shall it be before Jesus returns. And uh, everything was corrupt. The fallen angels in Genesis 6, 2-ish, I think. Uh, they came down. They started corrupting uh, the gene pool of man. Uh, they, they took women. And, uh, you know, the fallen angels took women and uh, started to corrupt the gene pool. They knew from Genesis that the seed of the woman would come and redeem everything. Jesus, through seed is of man, but seed of woman. In that miraculous Holy Spirit coming upon woman to create uh, Jesus in flesh. So, uh, these demons being fallen ones, uh, fallen angels, they, they, they knew the Father. They know. Um, I believe they still know, you know, kind of like the, the grand plan of things, right? <clears throat> if you're a member of a family, you, you know what's up. So, I believe they knew it and then they fell and they probably retained that knowledge. So, they corrupted everything. That, that was uh, the purpose of them doing what they did. And it was everything. It was all animals too. Because when the Lord said the flood, because he said only Noah and his sons and their wives were found righteous. Um, and I forget righteous, uh, I forget the proper word, but I think it implies more like genetic purity. Not like he was perfect, but uh, he wasn't corrupted yet, right? The Lord always saves a remnant. So, um, hence the, the flood that was sent, the floodgates that were opened uh, from the earth as well as from the heavens. And uh, these fallen ones were corrupting everything. I believe they were even messing with the genetics of, you know, animals. I don't know if they're having sex with them or what they were doing in their technology, but uh, corrupting and creating abominations. So when I saw this sunfish, I was thinking, like, par for the course, you know, another wink from the Lord. As it was in the days of Noah, Jesus Christ said, so shall it be right before I come back. We hear this, this news article from today, this crazy looking fish. It looks like it could have been an abomination. So it's either that, my first thought, or, you know, like the Lord and just like his cool creativity and just the foolishness of man's wisdom. You know, these scientists and stuff think they, they you know, they've categorized everything and they know everything and then there's something new that comes up. And it makes me think the Lord is like, he's so sovereign and wonderful and man's wisdom, even at the best efforts, you know, we still fall short of, uh, of what the Lord can do and reveals and surprises us. Praise the Lord. How cool. All right. Okay, so my trip to uh, Minnesota and back. We just got back yesterday. Uh, we split it about 24 hours of driving over two days. Now, when I first arrived in um, going from Wisconsin to Minnesota a couple weeks ago, I jotted some notes because I had been uh, kind of texting myself so I could remember, so I could share. Uh, so it was at 7.14 p.m. at mile marker 7 uh, two weeks ago, crossing into just about into Minnesota when that wall cloud, we had been driving tornadoes and thunderstorms on our heels all day, and then it broke, and it was nothing but sun and blinding sun and beautiful, right? So at mile marker 7 at 7.14, 14 is two sevens, that's a triple seven, biblical number of perfection. The Lord, oh my gosh, smiling and winking and saying, Kevin, you're looking, tell you what, I'm going to give you some stuff. And as I look, my car is at 77 degrees for the uh, AC. Didn't even know that either. But if we look, we can see these things, okay? 
Uh, praise the Lord. And then in Minnesota, so man, the, the spiritual warfare, the challenges. You know, when we moved to Florida almost a year ago, there was so much confirmation and blessings and signs from the Lord, like you are to be here. I am with you. I'll help you. And then in Minnesota, returning to a place that for me, you know, a lot of heartbreak and challenges. And uh, the Lord called us out of that place. Uh, the politics getting wicked, sexual perversion, different spirits, spirits of weird racism, sexual perversion, um, violence and hatred, different things, right? And in Florida, there's spirits of laziness and uh, uh, silver-tongued devils, people who, who might appear as, you know, believers. But you're like, whoa, that's different fruit. <clears throat> Different spirits everywhere, spirits of aggression. People drive nutty and you know, it's kind of suicidal when you got motorcycles cruising by different spirits. But um, yeah, so anyways, the challenges in Minnesota, uh, it was crazy. It, it feel like it feel like the devil was kind of gunning at us, uh, knowing that he can't steal our salvation, but he can screw up our walk and um, hinder it, you know, right? Make it difficult, being mad like, oh, I'm going to make it hard for you because uh, you're going to where I fell from. You're an image bearer. You're trying to strive after Jesus. And I hate you type of thing, right? So there, it was kind of almost like the mood of it too. It was it was a lot of chemtrail sprayed fake clouds that look like when you pull a cotton ball out, like just this weird blanketing. You know, and I'm looking at the heavens now and it's so different, but in Minnesota, it's like par for the course, the way it looks there, like just these stretched out fake looking clouds and ripples and patterns where you're like, none of this is real. In terms of organic, it's all created by a chemtrail sprain and by uh, frequencies and uh, vibrations and stuff, electromagnetic frequencies, you know, creating havoc. Uh, noticed just the ugliness of that. So it's kind of heavy and uh, it was rainy and cold. Um, okay, and then like the Lexus had the issues with the, had to uh, replace the right rear bearings. Um, praise the Lord, you know, it wasn't on our trip, but it's when we got back or we got to Minnesota. Um, you know, that was just a, a hindrance. But then baby Moses getting infested with like 30 ticks, you know, attacking our little Shih Tzu. <laughs> you know how crazy. And, and, and the other dog that lived where we were staying, she didn't have anything. And the two wiener dogs, they didn't have anything. Just baby Moses. Interesting. Um, that felt weird. That felt like a spiritual thing. You know, we had to shear him down, cut his hair. Uh, what else did I write down here? Okay, so mostly those things, kind of like so in contrast to how we arrived in Florida and it's so wonderful a year ago. We arrived back in Minnesota and it's almost like the lightning and the thunder and the challenges and the devil saying, and his demons and those principalities in Minnesota, like, oh, you're back. You know, it was kind of weird. Uh, I felt it. And uh, even Kim, you know, especially when the car issues in Moses, it, it felt like we were getting attacked at different angles and we prayed, you know, we prayed against it. Okay, so... And then in uh, in heading back to Florida uh, over the last two days, stopped in Tennessee a couple days ago, and and then finished it out yesterday. Uh, and this morning when I got up and took Moses out to, to pee, um, you know, looking in the heavens, a huge. I didn't have my phone with me, um, <laughs> but a huge, beautiful, very distinct colored rainbow. Ah, and it, what is June, the month of homosexual pride, right? Uh, where the devil steals that sign from the Lord and, and I was like oh no this sign is the Lord's promise right uh, his promise to us and it's beautiful and when we first arrived almost a year ago in Florida and I was asking for a sign Lord of your favor of your um you will be with us and you'll bless us and help us here and I made a video about that where, where the Lord as I was asking for that within seconds it was like a dial turned up and a rainbow came right above the sign that said welcome to Florida and then, like shortly thereafter, it squelched down and it was gone. It was like a, it was like it was just for me. Make your request be known. May it be done according to your faith. And I knew something would come. I was looking for it. I saw it where it wasn't. You know what I mean? So I saw it this morning. And I was like, Oh Lord! And it's beautiful the clouds and um, like like big beautiful puffy clouds and blue sky. In contrast to how Minnesota was, it's kind of just like this confirmation. Like, welcome back home. I am still with you. You know, you did well in a land that's been hard for you. You try to be a blessing to family and people, uh, but welcome back. I'm going to bless you and I'm going to help you in this next leg. That was awesome. Okay, and then on my drive also, uh, or on the, the voyage this last couple of days, and then even in the hotel in Tennessee, like, I always look for their Bibles there and I grab it. I'm like, yeah, here we go. And I just cracked it open um, just to see, see a word. 
And it was Psalm 37. And I read some of it, and I'll read it to you guys now. And then I opened it again before I left. And it's all just like, it's barely used, right? People aren't reading the word that are in the world. Um, <clears throat> and I opened it again just for the heck of it. So there's no crease, there's no use to it. And I opened it to Psalm 37 again, right? So signs from the Lord, the Lord speaking to us. And I'll read like the first five, six verses that um, I found kind of like the Lord speaking to me and blessing me with, uh, <laughs> with his words, with his voice. All right, Psalm 37. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. We'll go that far through uh, seven verses. So I hope I hope that word blessed you guys from uh, Psalm 37. Don't know why the Lord popped it on me, but it blessed me. And as soon as I read those first few verses, I was like, yeah, this is what I needed. Thank you, Lord. It filled me up. Uh, what else? Oh, also on the drive back, you know, there, there's also challenges, though. I mean, um, right as peaks and valleys, but the Lord will always, like, he gives us a sign of the rainbow today. Um, his promises, I love you. Welcome back. Safety on our voyage. Traveling, traveling, you know, like 1,700 miles uh, the whole way. Um, but there's challenges that come. Like this black bird. <laughs> it was Saturday morning. It's about 10, 13 a.m. I recorded it. I uh, texted myself 13 a number of, what is it again, of um, rebellion. This black bird comes swooping down. I'm like, oh, he's going to hit us. Boom, hit the front left of the car. And I kind of saw, like, look at this devil, that devil coming at us. You know, like, I mean, probably not, but... Jesus sent the demons into pigs, right? Um, so, so demons can get into animals. It made me think, like, is this devil? Are the devils, you know, the demons, trying to uh, gun after those who are who are striving after Jesus? Some of you might relate, where you're like, this seems like from the enemy and stuff like that. Whether it was or it wasn't, if it was, just showing me, like, yeah, that's all you got, Satan. Like I was thinking, and Kim was like, no, don't say that. I'm like, no, nah, I know, but you know, this devil's got nothing on us. You know, <laughs> we've got Jesus. Uh, that and then even baby uh, Moses, uh, while we were traveling, like he started making a noise and like he was, he, he puked. But uh, you know, so I mean, even ch little challenges come. But we were still blessed even in that because Kim grabbed a little collapsible bowl that I didn't know where to put it after I tried to water the dog, so I kind of threw it down on the floor. And luckily, it was so perfect she was able to grab it quick and like catch the puke in there. And, you know, so there's challenges, but like the Lord always provides different creative ways. And he's like. Hey, you know, life ain't perfect. Jesus promised you will have trouble, but Jesus said, I've overcome the world. Hey, so great. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Um, and also a stretch of the ride where uh, we had been eight hours into the uh, 12 hours driving, 13 hours on that day. And I, when I acknowledged the time, I was like, man, it feels like five hours. So the Lord gave this stamina and this, this energy. Wow. Amazing. Um, two more things, guys. And then uh, this would have been... I think it was the first day, Saturday morning, <clears throat> early on to our journey, I saw a triple seven billboard, three sevens, ah, biblical perfection. And I saw another billboard that said, God is here. So, all right, guys, I'm going to wrap it up with that. And may this encourage you to keep your eyes open, to look for winks from the Lord. He's speaking. He's communicating. Uh, it's fun, too, because then you can be in any situation, even something you might not like doing. Maybe something challenging in work or you're into uh, go get some uh, groceries or run some errands and there might be like a child screaming or like a rude person and you can still look around like, hmm, where's a blessing? You might see a holy angel, somebody who says, blesses you, you know? Um, yeah, so if you guys do that today and uh, leave some comments. If you can, from your memory, if you've seen some stuff lately, uh, bless us and share that. Or if uh, after you see this video and you start looking and you see something, you see that wink, come back. Leave a quick comment. Um, that stuff pumps me up and will bless the brethren who are watching this video. 
All right, guys, I hope I blessed you today. Thanks for watching. I'm glad to be back home and uh, plan on getting back to our regular videos so I can just share the goodness of the Lord with you, encourage you in these last days until we fly. That day could be today. Thanks for watching, guys. Please uh, make sure you're subscribed. And again, hit that thumbs up. I'll see you next time. God bless you.